and uh, before that uh, st uh, students are assembled in our lab sir so they won't be joining in the google meet link so they are they are assembled in our lab so we are projecting in the projector so you, you will be talking uh, in the projector so they will be listening to you uh, through the uh, screen sir so at okay, the end of the session we will have uh, uh, this is the, you want me to share the screen or uh, you'd be one sharing. second sir let me introduce you yourself sir so today we have a uh, yes sir so today we have a uh, mr sir it's not audible hey, sir. Please, sir. yeah you are audible sir you are audible so today we have uh, Mr. C. Sivanyanath Selvam. Uh, he's an architect and civil engineer with a post graduation in project management consultancy. And uh, he is a founder, CEO, and a managing director of uh, Pan India Consultancy Firm, that is CS Group of Companies. And uh, it is a, uh, it usually undertakes large scale government and PSU projects and uh, redeveloping in many uh, junctions. And he is in this company is embanelled with project management consultant with many state governments and government of India. So he has undergone many projects, did many projects across India and uh, such as Tex Valley, South Asia's largest textile mill with a floor plate of each floor uh, that is 2,60,000 square feet. And we have another project he has done uh, that is 19 story Peters Tower adjacent to Satyam Theatre in Chennai. So it's such as many uh, projects he have undertaken and uh, he has very vast expertise in planning and uh, planning and uh, project management related uh, subject. So I'm very proud to welcome you, sir, uh, for this uh, partial delivery uh, of CE 18603 construction planning and scheduling. So uh, you can start the session, sir. Uh, so at the end of the session, we will have uh, interaction, sir, with the students. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for having invited me and uh, uh, on behalf of myself and uh, uh, CS and Associates, I express my uh, sincere thanks to you and uh, Vengreshara University uh, in general. Uh, uh, friends, uh, good morning to you all. I think uh, we may not uh, interacting to each other. Uh, Mr. Vijay, how are we going to uh, show the slides? You want me to share it or are you sharing? No, sir. You projected, sir. You projected. Okay. Okay. Slide sharing, I have to. You have given me the slide sharing, uh, isn't it? I... Will you project or I should project? Sir? Yeah, yeah I, will, I, will, I will do it. Yeah. Can't share your screen. Report problem. Oh, only if I share it, it would be better. But uh, you have given me uh, this thing, no screen sharing. You allowed me to share the screen, Mr. Vijay. Vijay? Ah, yes, sir. Uh, did you allow me to share the screen? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Salute, sir. Okay. Can't share your screen. What is this? Are you seeing so this that's the option like uh, press and now in the bottom. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, that is uh, from there only I'm trying. Uh, currently sharing. Okay. Yes, sir, you're sharing, sir. Yeah, it's visible, sir. It's visible, okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, we are going to discuss about uh, construction management. Uh, see, the objective of construction management, I think you all might. Uh, uh, read are taught already and uh, just to understand it in a different way that is uh, all of you might be watching movies either in a theater or uh, an OTT platform. I think our role is more like a uh, 
film director's role as a construction manager or a project management consultant uh, we are here uh, like a cinema director uh, who should know the storyline and based on that storyline uh, he needs someone to develop the dialogues or the screenplay and it is not only enough to uh, make the screenplay and he has to find the cast for that the crew who are going to act uh, in the particular uh, movie the right people for the right role he has to choose and then he he himself cannot uh, cinematograph the entire thing so he needs associate directors assistant directors cinematographers art directors and so on and so forth so so many people he needs and apart from them he needs a real good production team and the financier to invest for that and after all that he needs a music director also to compose the music and to uh, make it good and an editor just compare this with your construction industry whatever be the construction whether it is road making or uh, construction of a building see each one is like a different movie uh, maybe an art movie it may be a detective movie it may be a uh, homely story something like that every story needs all these things but the team may different for different kind of a movie uh, the uh, an action hero cannot be a homely hero uh, uh, like that the villain uh, can always be a, uh, sometimes the villain needs to be a hero also takes a hero role likewise in uh, construction industry the construction management is how you understand the building the project how best you are understanding the project is how well you are going to organize your team other kind of resources like man material and machinery these three are the integral part unless otherwise we understand what is the kind of construction it is going to be and what is the timeline we are going to complete it and what is the budget allowance for that particular project and what are all the challenges the challenges is uh, it starts right from identifying the land if you are expected to identify the land and identifying the soil that is soil investigation to go for the right kind of a foundation from there it starts so what we need to be very very thorough is about the project what is assigned to us or we have been hired for so that is the first thing so the objective of construction management is to efficiently plan coordinate oversee all aspects of construction project from inception to completion few projects we may be asked to start right from the you see my company cs and associates we take it from concept to completion we uh, at times we have in house architects we design on our own we have in house structural engineers we have in house Uh, electrical engineers we uh, make use of them or at times what we do is if we feel that for a particular project my team is not capable or not competent or not having enough experience in that particular project we outsource people who has that relevant competency because a guy who is designing a, a industrial building may not be good at designing a residential tower a guy who is very good at uh, peb structure may not be good in uh, conventional uh, structural buildings so it is uh, much much important for you to understand the concept of the project and you have to involve right from the inception so the inception this is right from conceptualizing the concept and developing it into a uh, blueprint like that and managing resources selecting the technology Uh, schedule budget quality control and safety uh, now managing resource in the sense it is the uh, uh, budget what is allocated for that particular building the clients who have come to us whether it may be government it may be corporate houses psus or individual clients most of the time uh, few may have good knowledge Uh, about the building, about the budget of a building, uh, have a fair idea that for this kind of a building, this will be the expenses. And in most cases, more than sixty percent of the clients they come to you without any idea, without any idea in the sense 
they may have money but they may not have the right kind of idea what would be the budget for the kind of building they are asking for so our role is to make them understand this is your resource with this resource you can do only this much uh, or if you want to go for this you have to have a different kind of a source and the technology technology goes with the uh, kind of budget and the timeline and the other resources available at site okay so the technology is the most important thing what you need to uh, choose there are so many conventional uh, kind of uh, structural buildings you have peb if it is a high rise towers now nowadays we are going for composite structure conventional and uh, steel structure and you have maiwan technology and so many other technologies whatever available in present state we have to choose the right technology to match with the timeline and the available budget with the client okay these two things and again uh, you need to have a team the quality control and safety is uh, it relies on the team it depends on the team whom you are choosing so for the right the technology goes with the team also you have to have a team which is conversant with that particular technology so this is the most important aspect uh, the objective uh, uh, in this and the communication among uh, stakeholders ensure that project is delivered on time within budget and to the required quality standards because we are, as i said uh, before like a film director we are handling so many different agencies and few of them they work parallel few of them they work on sequence uh, only uh, after one work they have to take up the other work and few works you will be doing it parallel so the communication among the stakeholders here it is not only with the uh, construction team even with your uh, client and if you have a different consultants suppose if you have an architect if you have a uh, electrical consultant if you have a a uh, structural consultant if you have a hvac consultant and if you have a plumbing consultant your communication with all of them should be seamless and it should be effective only by then they will understand their role and time and their scope uh, unless otherwise they understand this better i don't think we can deliver it on time most of the time the projects uh, get delayed because of the sequential uh, uh, activities happens at site the sequential act activities should be seamless like uh, something happens at circus uh, there should not be any time lapse because you may have a schedule you might have made a schedule uh, you might have made a work plan uh, with the uh, delivery date in mind we would have worked it in backward uh, but because of the failure of one agency it is like a relay race uh, in a relay race there may be four or five guys uh, running on a relay if one fails to keep the pace what happens that particular uh, team will fail and the team which has a seamless uh, sequence they uh, win the race the same way here unless always you have proper communication and make your stakeholders understand their role scope and their timelines and when to take up and when to complete their job definitely it would be a difficult task for us to complete it on time as we uh, scheduled and the quality again uh, that we will uh, discuss later also to develop strong managerial information system uh the transparent communication system uh, every one this mis is the most important tool uh in any good construction uh, management uh every one in the management every one in the uh, that is every other stakeholders should have the information at the same time the same information should be passed on at all levels at all times and to maximize efficiency minimize risk uh, this mis will uh, maximize your efficiency minimize risk and optimize your project outcomes that is the most important thing and as a construction managers that is what we need to do and uh, this is obviously i need not say meeting the client's needs and expectations 
and overall the goal is to achieve successful project delivery while balancing competing priorities and constraints any construction uh, project however uh, well it is been planned uh, because it is human interface there will be some challenges we need to expect some challenges uh, some constraints some hind some hindrances because uh, it may be uh, because of natural calamity it may be due to uh, scarce of material it may be due to some other uh, issues uh, it may be used to lack of labor or sudden uh, like pandemic something may go and this will hinder our uh, progress of work so always we should keep back of the mind to achieve our goal there will be some constraints some challenges which we need to address as it goes and we should have a plan b if something goes wrong how to modify our schedule how to rework the schedule how to reorganize the resources like men material and machinery and sometimes we may have more men, manpower but that doesn't mean that there will be better progress of work because uh, optimizing the manpower is also one of the most important thing if you have more people the work will suffer you should have right number of people for the kind of job what we are assigning and the skill of the manpower is the most important thing uh, what we need to understand are we try to train them the train over training at site once you are recruiting a team nowadays we are doing large scale projects we bring them from uh, uh, some part of india and they may be skilled labors but the skill what they have may not be sufficient or may not be meeting your own requirements uh, for this particular uh, project so it is uh, orientation is the most important thing the moment you recruit them the labor also need to understand that is the skilled labors and the unskilled labors and all kinds of labor you have that the manpower they also should know what is the right skill uh, they need or you should try to improve their skills to match with our requirement that is the most important thing to overcome the uh, few constraints what we have and uh, the construction plan I, i think probably you all might have uh, had you know classes about this construction planning uh, is schedule oriented and resource oriented and the schedule oriented uh, you have two things one is the resource the resource in the sense it is uh, manpower material and machinery and apart from that the money and more importantly the time oriented and cost oriented is the budget indirect cost and direct cost what do you have the direct cost is the cost what you are incurring on your uh, building that is on the real construction or uh, on the development of the infrastructure and the indirect cost means it is the statutory uh, cost what uh, we need to for getting the approval uh, for uh, getting the electricity connection for getting the water connection there are so many uh, such invisible indirect cost involves in a construction uh, project and uh, it is our res uh, responsibility to make the client understand these are because they may be thinking that uh, uh, in terms of square feet or in terms of plinth area rate uh, most of the clients they will be convinced if i have so much i can complete the building it is not so a day one that is before ever we start the project we should make them understand this will be the direct cost and this will be the indirect cost with which the total cost will be so much and you should have a escalation also when you are calculating the overall budget you please be bear it in mind every year there is a change in cost that is there is a raise in cost it is never there is a lowering of cost on the building materials it is always on the higher side it goes up so you should plan what will be the escalation rate for this what you can do is there are central pwd schedule of rates there are pwd schedule of rates you take it for the last 3 4 years and you will understand the pattern in which it's getting raised 
and any tender uh, or any budget we are going to make it any estimate any uh, this thing you will be making it only based on the schedule of rates of the particular uh, region uh, or you will be following the central pwd rate there may be a slight difference between the state pwd rate and the central pwd rate and even that will not uh, give you the indirect cost it will be sp talking only about the direct cost that is the actual uh, cost incurs on the construction of the building or uh, uh, the construction of the road or any other infrastructure for that matter but this indirect expenses we should work it out we should understand what all the indir indirect costs involves in different projects and the statutory uh, fees and all the other kind of things also need to be included and the escalation, the four or five years I was telling, you know, the, uh, the uh, past three, four years, you will understand what is the kind of escalation it is. And based on that, if you, if you are calculating per, per se, uh, let us assume you are developing a tower uh, starting uh, in the month of uh, uh, June 2024, and you have a plan to complete it in 18 months, then it gets completed in 20. 19, uh, 2026. So there will be a cost escalation after a year or after nine months. And you know how much of construction you would have completed by the time, how much of work got progressed. And there are different items of work in each construction, isn't it? So you will be understanding what are all the items of work you would have completed at ninth month. So what are all the works left out from ninth to the day of completion that is 18 months so for that nine months for the item of works pending you can add the escalation cost you can keep it in mind uh, uh, or you have to add it suppose if you could able to complete it well within the uh, budgeted amount that is uh, uh, lesser than your budgeted amount any client will be happy Suppose if it gets escalated in between, they will be totally unhappy. They might have not planned for that kind of resource. So naturally the project will get suffer and it may get delayed also. The completion date will get delayed. And at times it may not get completed also. It depends upon the capability of the uh, client uh, in, uh, in the middle of a construction. If we could be able to mobilize, it's fine. If not, then the project will suffer. So you always bear in mind, we have to have escalation also in mind. We should have uh, the indirect cost in mind when we are making the construction planning. Next one, the choice of technology and construction method, because uh, now you have identified a project, you made a construction plan. The next thing is based on your construction plan, the time, the cost, uh, the location where you have the project and uh, uh, the size of the project you need to go for a right kind of a uh, construction methodology or technology uh, so construction method uh, this involves four or five uh, things that is project uh, what is the project and available technologies you should know and the cost benefit evaluation, uh, evaluation, uh, this is the most important thing between the uh, technologies available, which technology is best for that particular kind of a construction and uh, at what cost, at whose cost and the project integration, project planning, everything comes under uh, construction method selection. And uh, technical care, you should understand the technical characteristic of a project and uh, the constraints what you may have as we discussed uh, in the previous slide the constraints what you may face and the uh, stakeholder here the stakeholders objective in the sense the stakeholder is the client the most importantly the stakeholder uh, the client uh, and what is his objective and the environment where you are uh, constructing the environment in the sense it again depends upon the soil uh, the kind of structure you are going to develop all that comes under this and constraint the constraints are cost duration quality 
safety and the surrounding environment means production rate and the process capacity the process capacity here we mean to say is the kind of team what the contractor uh, has uh, that is the process capacity and the production rate uh, is again uh, what could be the uh, suppose you have a site uh, which is at a remote place then the production rate comes down for one simple reason is sourcing of material the uh, client may have money the client may have money uh, but the long lead items they cannot and there may be constraints in bringing the material uh, to the site or uh, the, you could have sourced the material but bringing the material at site again may be an issue so these are all the constraints uh, what we have and again available technologies uh, it again depends on the resource uh, and the major what are the major activities there are so many components in a construction uh, it has uh, your columns your uh, superstructure your uh, masonry work uh, and you have uh, electrical plumbing so many works you have uh, uh, in the activity and the resources required uh, depends upon the project the different projects needs a different kind of resources and the major activities of a particular uh, project and the cost involves for the diff not the overall cost here it means uh, because of the technology what is going to be the uh, cost difference that is between different technologies that is you may have go for a convention technology you may go for a uh, PEB structure, you may go for a my one technology or combination of these. So by that, what would be the cost? And you may be aware of the technology and the availability of the technology at the particular location where we are developing the uh, construction. You are de developing a construction at Chennai, you get everything. You have all kind of technology available within this city and you can select <coughs> any of the technology relevant to the construction what we are taking up. The same may not be applicable at places like Salem or at a remote place. You are developing a, a forest guest house or a uh, pro project for uh, infrastructure project in a forest area. You cannot have all the technology or you cannot move the uh, machineries, the required machineries for that particular technology to the location. So that is again an uh problem so the availability risk of doing that project here risk in the sense you will have two three risk one risk is uh taking the technology uh, to your uh, project site and uh, as we previously discussed uh imparting technology to the labors available with us he may be a skilled labor but he may not uh, have the skill to use this particular technology you so the risk of manpower, the risk of resource, the risk of moving the technology to your place and the duration. Suppose uh, availing one particular technology should not be a hindrance as far as timeline is concerned, the duration. And the duration because of production rate and process capacity. Uh, about these two aspects, I am going to discuss with you after a couple of slides because I am going to have, show you two case studies after this. Uh, one case study is uh, because of uh, the technology, how it delayed the project. Uh, the other one is uh, in the course of construction, because of some changes uh, in the design or in the view, how a project got uh, disturbed. These two things uh, I'll be discussing. That time we will uh, discuss about this production rate and the process capacity. And this risk management, I think the risk, uh, there are uh, uh, risk, uh, rather risk, let us uh, call it as challenges. Uh, there will be a lot of challenges uh, when we are doing a construction, uh, when, uh, when we are developing a project. So the three things, we have to always be uh, cautious or always be uh, proactive uh, in overcoming the challenges. You should envisage challenges and 
identifying the challenges even before it arises or once it arises we need to identify the challenge because of what the challenge the cause of the challenge or cause of the risk we should try to identify why it had happened and we should see that it never again happens and risk assessment and you have to assess the challenge the quantum of challenge if it is cost if it is uh, time if it is manpower you should assess the challenge uh, the risk assessment and risk mitigation the risk control and we should uh, come out with a solution which uh, in such a way that the the same challenge should never ever uh, repeated in our project that is the practice what we learn the experience what we le should learn is that challenge what we overcome should never ever happen in the site or whichever site you and me are handling thereafter and this is one project this is a project which we are doing uh, it is a progressing project now uh, this is near varagadam uh, this project is for foxconn uh, the total uh, there are 13 towers and each tower is still plus uh, 10 there are about 13 towers coming up that way and each uh, it is going to accommodate around 18720 uh, uh, inmates uh, it is a working women hostel work to uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, walk to work concept uh, building first of its kind uh, in this part of uh, the state okay why i am showing this in the sense uh, this project is happening uh, at Vallam Vadugal. The site is totally of clay. This thing, this is just for your understanding. I'm just showing the uh, pictures of the site. Okay, let us go to this thing. This is the indicative. Uh, there are, uh, we uh, converted that into six groups. All the 13 towers, we uh, uh, split them into six groups. All the six groups were given to six different contracts so the conditions uh, the site condition the resource condition uh, the timeline everything is same for all the uh, six contractors and technology for all the six contractors are the same okay uh, the challenges at site are the same for all the six contractors the, the so now but uh, over, uh, over the presentation, you will also understand that all the six groups are not performing the same way or not progressing in the same way. That is one case study what we are going to discuss now. Uh, this is just for your this thing. This is the timeline what we have given. And the top, uh, this thing you can see that the project star, uh, the envisaged uh, start of the date was 4th March 2022. The project was started on time. Uh, it was supposed to be finished on 3rd June 23. Okay, but it didn't happen that way. This one is, a, uh, uh, the, uh, this project is a comprehensive uh, delivery that is uh, uh, including, uh, it, it is a fully furnished uh, uh, hostel to be delivered to Foxconn. Uh, for that, the total number of days is 456 days. But uh, to be honest, we couldn't uh, complete it till date. There are few blocks which are uh, ready to be delivered. Uh, and most of the blocks are not yet ready. And let us discuss why it's so. And this is, uh, again, uh, what's happening? The start date is 4 3 20, uh, 22. Target date is 3 6 20, 23. This report, uh, I have taken a report of 16 11 uh, uh, 2022, what had happened, and uh, at the end of 31st December 2022, what had happened. This is what I have uh, given you uh, uh, just for your uh, idea. So, this uh, gives you. Uh, where what went wrong okay uh, what went wrong in the sense uh, the soil filling 
supposed to be completed on 16th November, 26th November 2022. It got completed. But sand filling and other things, slowly uh, the date finished was getting delayed. That is the uh, even up to still floor. You have to complete 10 floor, but still floor when we could be able to complete is only on December, uh, end of December. And we are supposed to deliver the building on 3-6-2023. And how is it possible after December 2022 to raise 10 blocks, I mean 10 stories above the stilt? And we decided to go in for my one. So uh, this is just for an idea. I'll give you the next slide. So we... Uh, up to still floor, it is conventional uh, concrete. Above still floor, it is my one technology. It is only to bring down the timeline because understanding the soil condition and uh, the rainy season, we uh, understood that we cannot complete the stilt floor, up to stilt floor on time as per our schedule. So the day one itself, we decided we'll go for my one. That is before uh, assigning the work, before floating the tender, decided to go for my one above stilt floor. And uh, till that, it was okay. And we identified and the work was given. And this is my one uh, construction schedule. Okay. And what had happened, it is six different contracts, but one single contractor had backed all the six uh, groups. The issue is, as one single contractor had taken all the six, uh, six groups, he didn't want to bring six sets of my one. He brought only five, which available of five sets. We have given, uh, you can uh, indicate your schedule for my one uh, framework system, and you can see there is, it's written as available of five sets. With the five sets, we had given them a staggered planning. Understanding, uh, uh, I was telling you the process time and this thing when we were discussing about the construction technology, uh, 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 choosing of construction technology, there was one slide in which it was telling about the process time and the uh, technology sourcing. Here, the contractor failed source the my one technology and again the issue was uh, my one shuttering material needs lot of time to process it it is easy to cast the concrete uh, within four days you can raise one floor but at the same time to make one my one set it takes 60 days to 90 days uh, and Chennai, we don't, uh, the contractor don't have a vendor to supply him from Chennai. So what had happened, he ordered somewhere in Delhi. We also failed uh, to inquire with him where from he is going to source the uh, Maiwan uh, shuttering. And it reached late and the construction today uh, is only at this, uh, this uh, I'll show you, where is it? The construction today is at very, very uh, delayed phase. That is, we have given them another nine months uh, extension of time. Even then, it's not getting completed, in which what's happening now, beyond expected escalation, there is an escalation. We expected an escalation, as we discussed before. We have to have escalation is also in mind when we are preparing the budget. That provision was given. But what happens now, even it's getting delayed, even over the expected escalation, because of the uh, unprecedented uh, uh, delay in the progress, uh, we are finding it to finding it difficult to constrain uh, the completion within the uh, budget. And this is being a government project and Foxconn being their partner. 
and for them timeline is the most important thing they are ready to uh, take care of the escalation if not what would have happened the construction would have got strained we might have been forced to stop the construction in between so we should always be careful uh, to understand the capability of the contractor and to uh, have a clear picture where from he is sourcing his technology that is the resource to implement the technology what uh, we have uh, envisaged and uh, the lead time has killed uh, the project now though we identified a good uh, technology though we identify a good contractor though the stakeholders are very very good because of one small negligence that is uh, we fail to uh, inquire our contractor where from he is sourcing his uh, my one shutter it's a very simple thing but the simple negligence led to a long term impact on the project and the cost escalation time delay uh, now they are going to it, it will have a cascading effect i tell you uh, if we are if they need to recruit all these 18720 uh, employees and to place them there now the recruitment is getting delayed because of the recruitment the production line uh, in the factory is also getting delayed so the suffering looks very small the impact looks very small that is uh, uh, time delay we may think it is a time delay in delivering the project but the time delay has a very big impact on all the sequential uh, this thing that is recruiting people and placing them at place and uh, uh, the production getting suffered uh, and they might invested a lot of money based on this timelines that is also getting delayed and what will happen next time when they uh, recruit a project management consultant if they want to recruit me they will have one more they will have a second opinion they will not do it immediately of course the reason is not cs and associates there are so many other reasons because government is involved but even then as a project manager it is an experience for me that we should know from which vendor the technology they are borrowing or they are hiring or they are buying the uh, right kind of technology so value engineering of course uh, organized application common sense uh, technical knowledge finding and eliminating unnecessary cost in a project this value engineering is missing in this project that's why i am putting this slide here so the value engineering uh, whatever good we have done the one uh, simple this thing brought uh, the value engineering is missing in this project so as a project management consultant we should never give an opportunity to do devalue the uh, engineering skills and our engineering managerial skills so we should have an organized application of mind and always common sense is the best thing than whatever qualification you and me have and the technical knowledge what we improve and uh, finding and eliminating unnecessary cost in a project unless otherwise you understand the project in total every micro level i think uh, it's difficult to uh, overcome this kind of a challenge what we faced and uh, this is value is function desired performance and uh, overall cost i think this this is just a slide i wanted to show and uh, so this is uh, the work completion chart i was telling you uh, see we were uh, the green are the actual uh, scheduled uh, carried out on time but till date till date the work completed is hello and delay of work you just see the delay of work this is only because of the my one uh, shattering what was not brought on time 
and not brought in adequate quantum required. So all the six, if they had six my one uh, shuttering uh, and all the six on time, we would have completed the project on envisaged scheduled time. Now it got delayed. This is one case study I just wanted to uh, show it to you. And the next one, uh, this is the project which uh, Mr. Vijay was telling about. This is a project near uh, Satyam Theater. It is a three basement uh, and uh, 19 story uh, tower. This is for Tamil Nadu housing board. We are doing it. And the total built area is around uh, uh, the tower is 820000 and the basement uh, put together is 1 lakh square feet. It has three basements and all three basements put together it is 1 lakh square feet to park around uh, uh, 1500 uh, cars. Okay. And this is the location. It is near that Peter's Tower and all and uh, it is located 3 kilometers away from uh, sea and it is in 3.84 acres. Why I'm giving under, this is the plan, the overall site uh, and the uh, hatch portion is the building. Okay, this is the basement, uh, the plan of the basement. This is the first and second floor uh, plan. Okay, and this is the timeline. We were supposed, we uh, date of handing over to the client uh, uh, consultant that is project management consultant and the contractor was on 24-3-21 and date of completion should have, would have been on 23-3-2023 uh, this is the timeline but it didn't happen that way why it didn't happen this is the uh, sequential activity parallel activity all that uh, for all the flows okay let that be and the hindrance one in the site during the course of construction. See, I, I told you it is three kilometers from the uh, shore and the first hindrance what we faced uh, was three basements with the depth of 10 meter below uh, existing ground level where the water table is just within two meter below the ground level. Uh, even when uh, we had the uh, uh, this thing soil test uh, we couldn't understand there is a water table below two meter only when we started because the points where we had the soil bore, soil test bore wells there there was no water uh, oozing out or there is no seepage and the water table somehow or other there might have been some hard rock or because of uh, play uh, surrounding it, the water didn't seep in. So uh, we didn't realize there is a water table. We had around 18 to 20 boreholes uh, to do the soil test. Despite 18 boreholes, we couldn't find there is a water table at two meter level. Uh, and we couldn't get proper data also. So that is first thing. <coughs> Second thing, the continuous seepage during the course of excavation. That is also okay, we can dewater it. What happened? Suddenly there was a heavy rain and water got logged, entire excavated area and pumping was also difficult because the drains, because of the uh, continuous rain, unstopped rain, the drains are also flooded. So we found it difficult uh, to drain the water, to dewater the uh, excavated portion. The, the water we are, what you are seeing in the third, uh, this thing is uh, for three floor level. It is three basements in the sense it is almost 10 meter height. The water inside is almost for eight to eight and a half meter height water you are seeing. And it's it's a Herculean task to remove the water. Then what did, uh, we have to lay a pipeline uh, for about two kilometer to drain the water. So this is an unexpected hindrance happened at this site. So these kind of challenges uh, bound to happen in, uh, this is a totally unprecedented uh, challenge. Okay, this is one challenge. 
So this has delayed the project for more than two and a half months. To drain the water itself, it took so much of time. And meantime, what happens when there is no work for two and a half months? Normally, the contractors will tend to send the labor team back and they will re-engage them. And uh, when you go out and uh, take up projects, you will definitely understand how difficult it is to re-engage a team. And to get the same kind of skill with them is much, much difficult. Even if they come and engage them, it will take a month or two for you to uh, bring back the same face of uh, uh, progress. That is the other difficulty what we face in this site. Okay. And what is the hindrance to? This was the original uh, view of the building. This is what approved by the uh, client before the start of the work. And the estimates were prepared based on this. Uh, and all the structural elements are developed based on this only when we were at say, eighth level that is when uh, the eighth floor slab was casted uh, the client wanted a different kind of a elevation so the revised elevation is this it is totally enveloped with structural uh, glazing and these two needs different kind of a, uh, structural elements and this got delayed the project for another six months because you had to design it. Only the, uh, it is not just uh, giving the view and making them happy. And uh, for the previous uh, view, it is all openable shutters. You can see all windows. It's all uh, UPVC openable shutters. So the uh, air conditioning is the choice of the tenant who is occupying it. Whereas here, it is totally enveloped with structural glazing. You need to go for a HVAC. When we designed originally, there is no centralized air conditioning. So there is no AHUs. There is no pipelines, razor mines uh, to have uh, air conditioning, centralized air conditioning. Now, that has become my biggest challenge in your design. And second thing is, your electrical load, the electricity load is much, much less compared to this view and that view. So that electrical design, the second thing, what you need to uh, redesign the entire thing. And the backup power, genset. The genset, what you planned earlier is different and what you need to provide now is totally different. Okay, and apart from all that, the space to keep your air conditioning unit, that is the compressor unit, the coolant unit, all that, uh, again, need to be designed. So the redesigning of the project itself took about three to four months because uh, you need to get a HVAC consultant, you need to have a firefighting consultant, the firefighting uh, for a openable shutter uh, building and for a fully closed building is totally different. The statutory requirements are different and the design is totally different. And again, the cost, uh, the invisible cost, because uh, uh, people who see this view and this view will definitely say this elevation will cost more. But the invisible cost like electrical, plumbing, HVAC, firefighting, and other structural modifications happened due to the change of view uh, and the downtake pipes. The downtake pipes were uh, given in a different place. Now you have to uh, keep it inside. At the same time, there should not be any leakage inside the building. So these kind of issues also started coming. So it took us about three months to redesign. And I tell you, what is the cost incurred? And again, there was an issue. Uh, before we were appointed uh, as architects and consultant, uh, there was an estimate prepared by the government of Tamil Nadu. And uh, without any soil investigation, because it is a redevelopment project, there were so many buildings there, say, so they could not do any 
uh, proper soil investigation but with the data is available with the nearby uh, newly constructed building uh, based on the assumptions uh, they have designed the foundation they have had something in mind they have uh, developed a estimate uh, without much de technical inputs and building was designed with openable windows as i said and uh, in middle of the project it was decided uh, change the building envelope to structural glazing and with the with this change the hvc ahc rooms are a unit that is in every floor you need to have a air unit if you are going in for a centralized air conditioning uh, originally the size was very very small we had given only one and a half meter by two meter just to have the uh, ahc now that size also we need to make it bigger and uh, this 11 kva to 33 kva power and uh, the transformer uh, area the location uh, to accommodate uh, this thing need to be given by the land owner the building developer uh, from 25 square meter it went to 300 square meter which is also affecting your uh, osr again when you going for the completion certificate that is also part of the project management consultant job when you go for the completion certificate after completion of the building you will find it difficult because there is a uh, uh, osr the setback or the osr is getting affected so all these kind of unwarranted uninvited challenges uh, comes if there is a change of design in between and uh, this effect from 235 crore the cost today is 450 crore we were supposed to complete the building uh, in 235 crore now we are uh, going pillar to post to get the re approval that is this is called as uh, rfs they call it revised financial sanction from the government we have to get to complete this project of course it is a pro process and it is because of the client's need uh, only with the government approval we have changed everything but the project getting suffered for about two years now which we we should have completed before not yet completed it will take another six to eight months to get completed so the cascading effect again here uh, the dynamics of uh, uh, rental would have changed by the time you are completing it so that will have an impact in uh, letting out the building and the revenue loss for the client uh, is much more than what is envisaged. There was no, uh, uh, see, the plan was to rent it out on day one, but the delay in construction itself is delayed it to 12 months. And by the time, there may be a uh, change uh, in the perception or in the need of the tenancy in that particular area. If, the, if one more building comes in the same area and if people getting occupied there, there will not be much demand for this building. So the impact uh, in, because of the delay is not only on the cost of construction, on letting it out and on the total economy of the local community. And uh, to so to summarize the best practices effective planning thoroughly planning the project scope task timelines using techniques like uh, whichever method you are following critical plan method and today you have a lot of other methods whichever uh, is good you try to uh, plan it well before uh, start of the project and establish open and transparent communication channels among project stakeholders, clients, architects, engineers, contractors, subcontractors. Clear communication helps prevent misunderstandings, resolve issues promptly and keep all parties informed. And the risk management, the risk what I was discussing with you, the two buildings, because there are buildings which we have completed on time also. Uh, in one or uh, uh, I, I think I may have uh, I may be given one or two more sessions. I'll uh, in one of the sessions I will try to uh, give you the uh, best practices uh, followed and how the project was completed even before time 
uh, that also i will share it with you in a uh, uh, couple of other uh, this thing and the risk management is normally uh, it, uh, it happens in every building in every project and we need to be doubly careful uh, before designing and uh, and don't get yield to uh, the client also for these kind of uh, changes in spite of my 30 years experience in the industry at times we succumb to the pressure of the uh, client because after all we are doing it for the client but end of the day uh, the client will also find fault only with the project management consultant not with anybody else or not himself it might got delayed only because of them so what we need to do is we should keep a clear communication with them uh, if they need any change ask them to give it in black and white you have a clear communication system mis and it should be recorded at every point of time whatever changes they need and if there is a delay uh, let it be because of the project manager or because of the client or because of the contractor or because of any of the consultant all that need to be recorded then and there that is the best practice what need to be followed the transparency in communication is the most important thing uh, to prevent misunderstanding and uh, blame gaming uh, end of the day because success will always have many fathers and failure is an orphan when something goes wrong no no one is ready to take the responsibility but something uh, goes good every one uh, will uh, try to climb the pride so you uh, as a project managers we need to be very very careful identify potential risk early and budget control develop detailed project budgets and closely monitor expenses throughout the project implement cost tracking mechanism to identify variance and take corrective actions uh, as need to keep the project within budget quality assurance and control i think this is the most important thing most of the contractors they have a wrong practice that whatever they do is right that's what they have in mind here the quality is not only in the quality of concrete quality of the material uh, it is the best construction practice that makes the quality uh, perfect because uh, every contractor uh, is getting concrete from a uh, batching plant so the concrete uh, uh, is a design mix uh 99 percent there is no possibility for them to uh cheat themselves or cheat you or me or to compromise on the quality uh, and the slum test we are doing it cube test we are doing everything is fine but why the buildings are not uh, uh, uh as uh, because the end product is uh is not up to the mark it is because of the poor construction practice at site uh the shuttering material uh the plumb line spread all this should be uh very 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 important and the micro level quality control will uh, definitely uh, improve the overall quality of any project any building uh so we should uh, uh import a kind of training for the uh, entire contractor team including the uh, labor set site about the importance of line and length sprint level and the plumb uh, it takes uh, for them hardly 10 minutes to correct these small kind of mistakes but uh, there is a wrong perception in the minds of contractor that whatever they do it is right and uh, the corrective measures takes time and it consumes cost it is not so in fact uh, if they do good uh, you might have given a plastering thickness of 20 mm by the mistake of the mason the concrete thickness will vary from 20 mm to 30 mm uh, it is an invisible expense on the uh, contract for the contractor it, it will have a dent on his profit we should make the contractor also to understand that if he makes a quality building he is going to benefit the more uh, the uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of small small things we need to uh, educate the contractor
and uh, safety management uh, I, i can tell you one small uh, this thing the same site the peter tower what i had shown you a guy without uh, uh, wearing the safety belt in uh, despite the project manager was cautioning him uh, he went up uh, to the fourth floor he had fallen down uh, and now he is totally bedridden uh, he cannot do uh, anything the, the, these are all the safety measures the, the lab safety the uh, worker safety is the most uh, important thing wearing helmet and all is different but uh, safety is while removing the shutter keeping the uh, site clean itself is the biggest safety standard what we need to import most of the sites it's not clean and uh, the site which is not clean is not safe uh, it should be free from debris it should be free from all the building material it should always be uh, clean uh, if the contractor keeps the site the construction place clean that itself is the first safety and resource management uh, which we discussed in the second slide itself efficient efficiently manage project resource including labor material equipment and subcontractors optimize resource allocation to minimize waste minimizing productivity and avoid delays right material to be procured at right time so at times contractors procure the material which they need uh, after 3 months and they will find it difficult to invest for the work which is happening now you will be uh, uh, passing his bill for the work completed but the material what he brought inside may be required for him only after 3 4 months for an example let us uh, take it this way uh, uh, during uh, casting of columns and beams you need only 16 mm 20 mm steel rods and for roof slabs it may be 8 mm 10 mm 12 mm uh, the contractor instead of buying this he might have procured uh, because someone might have told him uh, if you buy 12 mm 10 mm 8 mm uh, it is available at a reduced cost they will buy this it will be idle for months uh, it's a dead investment for him and he may not have resource to invest for the required material at this point of time with uh, two things happens here Uh, the contractor suffers for uh, need of resource and the project uh, project will get delayed and because of this delay uh, there will be a cost escalation over a period of time so uh, cost overrun time overrun and end of the day it spoils the name of the project manager so we have to be careful uh, in all these things we should closely monitor the contractors uh, this thing also resource planning also or otherwise we should uh, give them a resource plan how they when what they should procure and again the lead time a few materials may be available uh, nearby and the lead time may be less and few uh, like uh, tiles for the site uh, it's a long lead item suppose if it's a larger building uh, to uh, it may take given couple of months for you to get the uh, tiles uh, and lift again a long lead item if you order only after uh, you place a purchase order they will start making the uh, lift for you and installation itself will take about 40 days so these kind of items the long lead items we need to be uh, procured well in time that is well in advance by that there is no uh, hindrance for the progress of the work and collaborative uh, teamwork uh, i think uh, teamwork is the most important thing as i said we are all like a uh, film director you have to collaborate with the different uh, uh, teams different teams the electrical means it's a team plumbing means it's a team construction uh, contractor is a different team hvac is a different team uh, lift is a different team unless service all these teams work in collaboration understanding each other scope properly uh, we cannot uh, do a seamless progress at site so encourage teamwork and 
there should be mutual respect no uh, team is less all the contractors all the contracting vendors are equal uh, even uh, even a small vendor uh, at site is most important person at that site without he doing completing his job rest of the jobs may not be taken up also so every small job is equally important and the mutual respect between the uh, teams we should cultivate and technology adoption uh, as we discussed earlier we should have a, a proper technology and now you have lot of software available for project management uh, go with one which you could easily adopt and which is very very uh, handy for you which you can uh, handle easily and which will improve your efficiency and enhance communication uh, and which is acceptable for the stakeholders that is the client and other stakeholders so the technology what we are going to have should be adaptive for the total stakeholders of the particular uh, uh, project uh, and uh, because unless otherwise everybody is on the same page uh, it's very difficult uh, to have a homogeneous uh, thought process and continuous improvement uh, as i said if we identify one risk or one challenge and if you overcome that that kind of a challenge never ever should happen in our lifetime uh, that is the kind of uh, improvement what i would suggest and uh, encourage a culture of continuous improvement and innovation within the construction management team by implementing these best practices i think uh, we can improve the efficiency minimize risk improve the quality and the safety of the workers and ultimately i think we can achieve very very successful uh, projects and uh, i think i wish you all uh, to be an excellent project managers for a period of time and uh, i think uh, with this uh, we will end up today's session and uh, uh, if you have anything to ask me uh, in particular with this uh, let us have or otherwise after all my sessions are over we will have one interactive session at uh, the college uh, thank you mr vijay uh, over to you okay, sir thank you sir and uh, so we have the students uh, who are interested to uh, interact with you uh, yeah yeah please 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 yeah sir yeah so i'll connect with uh, yeah yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to hello sir yes yes please uh, hello sir hi sir i'm rajmendra sir from civil department of third year sir yeah tell me sir uh, sir, sir, sir. Sir, the major factors that influences the uh, revised estimation or revised schedule is what, sir? The major factors. Major factors? That influence the revised estimation, sir. Estimation. Influence, influence the revision of estimate. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. The, uh, the first thing is, uh, uh, I tell you, uh, I had uh, given two uh, case studies. In case study one, uh, the one uh, uh, natural uh, hindrance, that is uh, the hindrance because of uh, influence by rain, natural calamity. Seepage. Uh, seepage. Seepage. Seepage, it is a typical this thing because uh, it, it doesn't happen in all the projects. Uh, in, gen uh, in general, the issues are... Uh, unless otherwise we have a clarity on the uh, items of works to be uh, carried out for a particular project. Suppose, uh, let me put it this way. Let us assume we are going in for a residential tower. Okay, sir. Uh, if we are planning for a residential tower, uh, you may know how many apartments or how many flats you are going to have. 
So yes. when you are having so many flats, suppose if you have a flat of thousand square feet, then one car park is sufficient. Suppose if you have, if you want to, if you have thousand two hundred, even just two hundred square feet more, needs two car parking as per statutory requirement. So uh, unless you plan it properly, and unless you envisage it properly, what will happen? You may give one car parking for each house. And when you go for actual construction, the client, uh, the promoter, developer will ask you, no, 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 I want two car parks. Then naturally what will happen, you will, uh, either you will go for staggered parking of two cars in the same still floor, or if there is any possibility, you will go for a basement. So yes. this, will, this will have a, uh, this will force you to uh, re-estimate or re -estimate to revise your estimate. Get this you. is one possibility. The second possibility, I tell you, uh, when we are designing the same residential apartment, you are designing with two toilets, one kitchen, the two bedroom, two toilets, and one kitchen. And all these toilets and kitchen, it needs tiles. You might assume the tile at the rate of 45 rupees or 40 rupees a square foot, and for which you might have uh, designed and estimated. Uh, what will happen? Uh, you may develop a mock-up, one mock-up uh, house. The client or the buyers, the prospective buyers, when they look at it and they may ask for a different tile. They may have their own choice and that may cost more than whatever uh, uh, you have assumed and estimated. So there will be cost escalation in residential building. And in this kind of infrastructure building, when you are doing for government, okay, uh, okay. The, when you are doing for government project, I tell you how the risk of division will cost. Uh, there my, you know, the offices are getting changed every two years, three years, or some of them may go on promotion. When yes. the building was conceptualized, somebody might have been the team member. That is your client is somebody. Maybe the same department. And okay. you might have discussed with somebody and based on his inputs, you might have designed the building. Okay, yes, for a given site, you can have n number of designs. Uh, the, uh, even if we are not designing, the architect would yeah. have designed it, he would have designed it according to the, uh, based on the inputs given by the particular officer. <laughs> by the time you started the project, uh, the officer might got transferred or some other officer might be placed or promoted to that place. He may have a different idea about the same site. The, the same, same site. Okay. Same site but on the same project. And he will come out with this uh, input. Different, different inputs. Different idea. And you can't say no also. Now how uh, from the uh, uh, building view, uh, from openable windows we have changed it to uh, completely structural glazing. There may someone may come with a different idea, and you can't say no. Also, as a consultant, uh, we are there only to give whatever the client wants. Whatever the client wants. Yeah. Yes. And uh, if, if, uh, but what we need to do is we should record it. As a project managers, we need to record it because it is not because of your uh, this thing you are not uh, re-estimating. So the estimate gets uh, revised. These are all the things. Only because of uh, uh, the project manager, where he fails is if you fail to understand the project properly. Uh, without a soil investigation, if he designs a building, uh, I think at times it may go wrong because the variation happens mostly on the earthwork up to substructure. Till you complete the substructure, there is a possibility for change in quantities and change in design, uh, the column size, column depth, uh, or uh, the foundation design itself, whether we go for pile, we go for raft, or we go for isolation. All this happens only uh, up to substructure. After substructure, if we plan it properly, if there is no change right from day one, I think there is no need to revise the estimate. But substructure, normally, there will be cost uh, difference always. Uh, between the envisaged cost and the completion cost, there will be a difference. It may be less actually or it may go up also.
substrate that is a possible okay sir okay sir thank you sir thank you hello sir yes sir ha ah, we are another student sir once again yeah yeah please 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 sir Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Um, sir, my name is Priya Dashmi. I okay. have doubt related one. So, if you have, I can hear you. Hello, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, sir. So, um, we do the projects in every season, right, sir? So, during the rainy season, if the activity, if one activity gets delayed, how do you manage the project completion time, sir? Not only that but also the materials will be wasted sir during the rainy season so how do you manage all this yeah actually uh, when we design a pro when we uh, uh, make a schedule project schedule that is timeline uh, we okay, should uh, we should uh, uh, take this also into consideration that is the rainy season unprecedented rains uh, we can keep it we know what is the rainy season and you have the data for last 4 5 years okay yes, the particular area uh, the region where we are doing it uh, based on that uh, we have to schedule the program that the start of the project and we should plan it in such a way that uh, uh, at least one concrete uh, that is one slab is casted by that the internal work during uh, this the internal work can be carried out Okay. Uh, this is how we plan, but uh, uh, at times unprecedented rains in uh, non-monsoon uh, season also uh, a hindrance. Uh, during that time, better to uh, stop the work for uh, two three months. And if at all there is any work inside the building, you have to reschedule uh, your program. You have to reshape the program and you have to do it inside the building. That uh, uh, you can take a call only during the course of construction. Okay. But normally we design uh, considering the monsoon and the rainy days. Sir, if we reschedule the construction phase during a unprecedented rain, it will be difficult for us to regain the efficiency of the labor, sir. Yeah, definitely 101 percent. Uh, even if you re-engage the team, uh, the pace of progress will be less only. And to pick up the pace, it takes time. Uh, that kind of a hindrance in construction industry we always face. And uh, when we schedule the time, we have to uh, keep that also in mind. We have to give some lean time also. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the, the what we schedule during our college days and what we uh, schedule uh, actually at site that uh, definitely there is difference okay sir because here we do it more practically uh, mm -hmm. during college we uh, 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 yes sir i can understand on, a, on, a, on a idealistic conditions uh, we used to do okay. <laughs> yes sir uh, Sir, and, uh, 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 yeah, tell me. another question, sir. So, what kind of skill and knowledge should a fresher process to get into the construction management domain, sir? Uh, beg your pardon, repeat me the question. So, what kind of a skill and knowledge should a fresher process to get into the construction management or sector domain, sir? I tell you, even for me, practice never ends. Every day, okay, I'm also learning. Uh, okay, unless service, uh, you get into it. Uh, as a pressure, uh, you need to be very strong in understanding the item of works in a project. That is, if, okay, it, is a, uh, if it is road, what are all the item of works it involves? Uh, if okay, it is a building, what are all the item of works it involves? And the sequence. Uh, okay. the, uh, the, which item to be carried out first, which item carried, to be carried out next, and what are all the parallel items can be done uh, okay. to the, at the site. 
Suppose if the community is dead and the, if the, uh, if the plastic is over in a site, before plastering, what are the items to be carried out? That is electrical conduits and electrical conduit pipelines and plumbing lines. These kind of uh, ideas you should develop in the building. Okay, what are the item of us when it should happen? Uh, because of which item is getting detected. This kind of an idea you can uh, uh, learn. And uh, I would strongly recommend uh, every institute and every construction management student to go in for an intern for six months. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, unless there is uh, like architects, uh, they come to our office for six months in turn. Like that, yes, you can all go for a six months in turn uh, in your fourth semester, uh, until in your uh, fourth year, third year, uh, second semester. I think it's an yes, opportunity for you to learn. And then if you continue your uh, curriculum, I think that will give a fair idea uh, when you are taught. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for this uh, great information regarding this. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. That didn't make it. One more student, sir. One yeah, 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 please. Hello, sir. Yeah, tell me. Can, uh, I'm Lumina, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, what was the software that you used in this project, sir, for the pro uh, project engine? Primavera. Okay. Sir, uh, I have heard about that. Uh, is it effective, sir? It's effective. Uh, I tell you, uh, uh, none of the software is effective unless you have a team. Yeah, sir. The team, the, the team should understand uh, first. And now there are so many uh, uh, softwares are available, and uh, it is not uh, only this. And uh, uh, see, I tell you again, uh, we are working for different uh, clients. Okay, and different contractors are working with us. Uh, we decide a software which is. Comfortable for which is, uh, which is comfortable for all the stakeholders. That is the client, contractor, and the project manager. So you should use a software which uh, can uh, be uh, followed by all the stakeholders. Otherwise, the software which you are using is uh, uh, of no use. So it okay. depends side to side. We adopt as a consultant. We need to adopt uh, the change, and we need to uh, go as per the team's uh, choice. Okay, so forcing sir. them to learn this, we adopt ourselves to their. Uh, okay, sir. Sir, and then uh, you said that uh, software is uh, basically uh, team effort. And uh, say, uh, as per this, uh, what? Uh, where you have been lagging, sir, so that uh, you faced a delay in this project, sir. Which project? Uh, these uh, two projects. In this, ah, uh, uh, yes, sir. The, yeah, project, the project which is, you showed. Yeah. Uh, the one project uh, I was telling you, the my one uh, shuttering. Where yes, we failed mm -hmm. is, uh, my one shuttering is one of the fastest construction technology available. Uh, in today's uh, this thing, that was the high raised identical buildings. Okay, where we failed is we were uh, we didn't uh, check where from the contractor will source the my one shuttering. We were of the opinion that there are the people uh, 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 selling my one uh, that is manufacturing my one shutters at Chennai and Bangalore. We were of the idea he is going to buy either from Chennai or from Bangalore. Uh, but uh, he placed the order at Delhi, and which took about three months for them to supply. It's a long lead item. So that's where we failed. If it is at Chennai or Bangalore, we ourselves might check uh, the availability and the timeline when it can be supplied. That's where we failed. Uh, that it's a small uh, 
we uh, these assumptions and presumptions should not be there in construction management okay sir Sir, uh, I have one project that the other project is because of uh, 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 seepage is one reason more than that the unprecedented okay. rain already the site is a water logging site and when there is a uh, uh, rain beyond our expectations uh, we could not drain the water see we can dewater the water from the basement with pumps but to pump out the water even the drain because of continuous rains the Rains are also flooded, so we have to lay a pipeline for two kilometers to take the water out to a low-lying area, uh, uh, and it took time. And uh, the other issue we had there was the client himself changed the uh, elevation design. They wanted a different elevation, different view for the building. Uh, it was openable shutters. From that, we had gone for uh, uh, structural envelope. So. Uh, that again, uh, it takes time to design, takes time to uh, modify uh, the existing structure to suit uh, this. So all that uh, uh, the time delay, uh, cost escalation, all that happened because of it. Okay, and uh, next time I will show you uh, show you all uh, the best practices also. The project which we completed on time, uh, how was it possible? That also we will discuss. First time I just wanted to give a critical case study, uh, how it gets delayed. Next time we will have uh, we'll discuss about a good practice also. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Sir, yes, sir. That's it, sir. Okay. There yeah. more? No, sir. No, sir. That's it, sir. So it's okay. clarified, sir. Students, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank uh, you so much, sir. Thank you for having invited and. Uh, sure. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank we'll you. meet in the next session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yes,